Wing is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, I posted a chart from my good friend, Tom Hugard of Trader Tom, and I put it up here. It's about new moons and stuff. And you'll see here that uh, there was one in 1929, and there was one in uh, 1987, and there's one in 21, 10 and 21. Folks, let me explain something to you. We have two of those every month. So whether it means anything or not, you know, I'm not really sure. We do have some similarities that are worth looking into. But I do believe, and I strongly believe, they're going to be entering into one of the most uh, important uh, six weeks of the year, culminating sometime around uh, November the 3rd, but we'll be looking at that more and more as we go into this uh, later on uh, this month. Uh, next week is going to be a very full week. We have Paula Webb, uh, Mark Douglas's uh, uh, widow. She's going to be uh, carrying the torch for Tom or for Mark since he since he since she has been over the last four years. She'll be a guest on Monday. We're also going to have Stan Harley, a new guest, Jeff Cooper, who I've known for 30 years. His father was a very very famous trader in the Los Angeles Beverly Hills area, and uh, Jeff's carried the torch for him for many years. And then we also are going to have Tim Bost and Jeff Huge. So we're going to have a full full week next week, and I think we're going to be in, a, in an area of the market that will be uh, in quite interesting. So let's, uh, let's someone's asked the question, and I'll try to answer it right now, uh, and that is, uh, it's about the astrology, folks. When I started doing the astrology uh, back in, I, I mean, I, I dabbled in it a little bit when I was at Drexel, but I had 20 when, 20 men with me. Jim Twentyman was, was my sidekick. And uh, he he was really into Gann, and he really knew astrology, and I didn't. And since I was the manager, I could pay for all of it. So uh, Jim wanted to take a six-month sabbatical, and so he did, and ended up being a year. And uh, you know, he studied Gann, uh, you know, a lot and a lot of astrology and stuff. And he was involved when when Mary Rivers came in and did the astrology stuff. I've gone through that with you, but I really didn't get into it until Dr. Miller, Dr. Ruth Miller, contacted me in uh, July, uh, August. Uh, of, uh, 86, 1986, when I was there in uh, Avila Beach, and living we're living with John Raffoni, and uh, she showed me that these markets were related to Fibonacci. Fibonacci was related to astrology, and that's what got my interest. The way she was able to bring my interest to a peak was uh, she showed me that the Venus Uranus cycle was uh, 255 days into 365, which is 0.618 of the year. And if you look at the four major, you know, uh, aspects, you have squares, trines, uh, oppositions and conjunctions. Oppositions are 180 degrees. Conjunctions are starts. That's zero. That's the new moon. Oppositions are the full moons. That's the type of thing you're seeing. But if you, if what we did was, she said, okay, I went down. To, I went down to Sarasota. That was around the first of November. I left uh, about the 28th of December, as I recall. I was there almost two months. Uh, no, actually, I left in October, and I and I left on uh, right after Christmas, and I came back on I think the 28th, and uh, that's when I started uh, you know doing the book. But but the reason why I looked at this, I said, well, I was really skeptical, but I needed a break. And uh, she was always, uh, I mean, I didn't know Ruth as well. I mean, I, her, her husband at the time, John, and her son, Terry, were my, my biggest uh, uh, grain uh, uh, people at, at, at Drexel. I mean, they didn't have many, but they had a huge farm, and I hedged the soybeans and corn for them. Plus, I did a lot of, we did a lot of speculation, and we were very successful at it. But I only only met Ruth probably four or five times over my lifetime, even though I talked to the, the two men uh, every day. Anyway, uh, they both passed away uh, relatively early. Uh, but uh, what she tried to show me was that these Venus Uranus uh, conjunctions and oppositions and stuff were related to Fibonacci. And I said, well, how are we going to prove this? She says, we have the dates. She says, why don't we ask, uh, you know, our friend Neil Michelson down at the uh, uh, 
can't, what's the name of that kind of Astro Astro Cape down in uh, uh, San Diego, and he had all of the aspects. So all I had to do is give me these aspects, and then we twenty minutes took the computer. And remember that this was 1980, uh, 1987, 86, 86, 87. So there was really you know not like it is today. And so we matched up the dates you know with these, and we found that by golly, these look like they do work pretty good. And so we started to look at some other, and this is what I put in the book, you know, Astro Cycles, The Trader's Viewpoint. And one of the things that was in that book that caught the attention of Frank Tauscher, who wrote the Super Trader's Almanac, was the fact that this P index, this Pesavento index, I wanted to call it the, the Miller index, but she wouldn't let me do that. Basically, what it means is that there's so many aspects occurring. You know, on the standard deviations that we talk about when we do the Floor Trader's Handbook, if you go to one standard deviation or two standard deviations, well, the same thing is true of dates. So if you've got a date Let's say where there's only two aspects occurring, okay, or there's a day a day where there's more than 13 or more, that tells you that you're in the 90th percentile of cycles that are entering that time frame. So all we do is we watch for those very closely. Frank was so convinced that it was so important. He called it his number one timing. Uh, he put it in his book and put it in the book and everything. He said the number one timing uh, vehicle that he had. And he, up until the time that he passed away, he said that it was still the best. Now, the problem is about 10 years ago, these astrologers start adding a whole bunch of stuff in it so that you really can't see it when you're looking at an ephemeris. I mean, before all they had was the major aspects. Now they got all these little things that are out there that I have no idea what they are. So it's basically uh, unusable for me. So it made it a little, little difficult to do that, but it still works very good. If I could just figure out how to do it, I probably ought to put Shane Smolian on it because he would be able to figure it out pretty easily, I would guess. But that was that was the way he operated, and it was very good. Frank was hands down uh, the best trader that I ever knew. I'm, I'm, I knew uh, Amos Hostetter. I had lunch with him once, and I met him one other time in his uh, – he died in January of 75. I met him in 72, 73 era, but uh, I didn't know him very well. I knew who he was. He probably may or may not have remembered me. I don't know. But uh, Frank, I talked to a lot. I mean, he was uh, he was hands down the best trader. I mean, uh, we used to have these contests, you remember, uh, that they used to put out, and everybody would get $100,000 of play money. Frank wouldn't have any of that. He put up real money. And not only that, not only did he win every time, but he beat everybody by 200%, 300%, 400%. He was the greatest. Not only that, he was one of the warmest, most generous human beings I have ever met in my life. He's a very strong, born-again Christian. He was a Baptist. He lived in Tulsa, Arizona. <laughs> Larry, stop the presses. Did they move Tulsa to Arizona? Shucks, the front door. Oh, are you kidding me? It's Oklahoma, boys and girls. He was standing on the corner with his son after the markets closed, and they were chatting. And his son was talking to his dad, and his dad said something, and he didn't finish the sentence. And when he turned around, he had died of an aortic aneurysm in one second. He didn't even get to finish the sentence. That's how quickly he died. What a great man. Anyway, we're going to cover some more about this stuff because something big is in the works, and I want to try to share some of it with you. So we'll do that when we get back. 877-927-6648. Call in before the lines jam up, folks. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of gold uh, from one of our good friends, a very, very large speculator in Singapore. And if you'll notice here that his price objectives on this happen to be at 1745 based on this spot gold price. So it's very, very important bottoms. We have triple ABCDs down in here. Silver is, uh, you know, acting a lot a whole lot worse, but, you know, still holding above $22, which is uh, relatively important. Let's get back to uh, Frank Tauscher. He helped, He happened to be a big fan of, uh, of uh, Mark Douglas. I introduced the two gentlemen together, and they certainly loved it. But one of his, in his book, uh, the Super Traders Almanac, at the beginning of the book, there's a quote there by David Viscott, MD. He was a psychologist that uh, really worked with risk, not necessarily with the markets, but just with risk. Uh, David ended up being very, very ill, and he took his own life because he couldn't stand the pain anymore. He had terrible brain cancer, and uh, he passed away. He was a real, real gentleman, very sharing person, too. But here's the quote that he wrote, not risking is the surest way of losing. If you do not risk, risk eventually comes to you. There is simply no way to avoid taking a risk. If a person postpones taking a risk, the time eventually comes when he will either be forced to accept a situation that he does not like or take a risk unprepared. Putting it in a short way, the way David White says it, sell when you want to, not when you have to. And that's a very, very important concept. So we all have to take risks, but we have to know what that risk is and be able to handle it. That's our responsibility to do that. that what's, that's what makes Tom... Uh, who guards such a super trader? He doesn't mind if he loses 10, 15 times in a row because he knows 16, 17, or 18 trades, he'll probably make it all back and many times. So that's the whole key is you've got to realize that when you do take, take a risk and you're going to be forced to do it, hell, you take a risk when you open when you start your car in the morning, for heaven's sakes, especially if you live in the south side of Chicago. Anyway, that's uh, some of the things that I think that are really, really important. Uh, but um, David was a really uh, – 
never got to meet him. I talked to him on the phone a few times, but I never did get to meet him. Mark actually took a trip uh, to visit him, but uh, I never did. And uh, Frank went to meet him once, too. But I certainly didn't. Both of those gentlemen, Frank and Mark Douglas, Frank Tauscher and Mark Douglas, focused on the risk uh, quite a bit. Now, I've, I've missed a few markets here recently because I've been focusing on too much. We talked about this many times here, folks, uh, here at, on the show here at TFNN about the cattle market. And if you'll notice here, we had this big ABCD pattern up there at that 138 level. The market went straight down, dropped 13 handles without an update. Look at that. I mean, it went out 11 days in a row, 13 days, and it rallied exactly to the 382. We're now trading at 127 on the low end of that. And uh, so that's a perfect 382 retracement again, you know, working really nicely. Folks, I don't know if many of you follow the futures markets. I know a lot of you folks are stock market people, but we are seeing some really, really severe bear markets going on, not only in hogs and cattle, but we're starting to see it in other things like corn. I mean, just yesterday or two days ago, the corn, after making a beautiful bottom, went up and made a 382 retracement, uh -uh, as did soybeans, as we posted. Posted in there yesterday. I think I still have that chart here, and we're substantially below that level right now. Yep, here it is. And I've done all the others too, but that's uh, that's really what you, that's what we're looking at, and it's making uh, making me wonder. Maybe there's something more sinister out there that could be uh, in the cards. That I I'm not sure. Remember, we have a very extended stock market. And, of course, we have a bond market that's gotten hit. You remember yesterday we went down to the 61% retracement in the Treasury bonds. And today, what did we hit? We went right down to the 786 retracement down there at 162.08. Uh, We're trading at 162.17 right now. So um, these markets are they're a little getting a little bit tricky in here. So remember that uh, it doesn't always mean uh, I'll, I'll update this bond market for you, folks, so you'll be able to see it. Yes, Marshall is saying, yes, it could be deflation. But Marshall, how could that be deflation? They're telling us that we have inflation everywhere. And we do have it on a short term basis, of course. But, uh, you know, overall, it's probably not. We've had real estate go absolutely through the roof. Used cars and trucks are going absolutely through through the roof because of the supposed shortage in the uh, chip chip market but you look at the you look at the chip makers and I believe those chip makers don't look that bullish to me I don't look at those charts but I heard it on Bloomberg that uh, they just don't look that bullish so I'm I'm just getting a little suspect in here one thing I want you to try to do folks is try not to miss the show on Wednesday that's going to be a, a really big show because uh, I'm going to make a, a little announcement here I'm not retiring or anything like that I'm not quitting or anything like that. I'm going to make a prediction, and I, I just want to uh, uh, to tell you to not to uh, not to miss the show on Wednesday. If you miss Monday and Tuesday, but don't miss Wednesday if you can, or listen to it as if you can record it or not. So we'll uh, remind ourselves of that. Okay, getting getting back uh, to the markets. Uh, I, I think it's important. I I just wanted to show you a perfect example here of a. Uh, just one second here. I got the wrong chart up. I wanted to talk just a tiny bit here uh, about the uh, stock market. Let me get this up here. We're going to use the uh, Dow Jones because everybody looks at that one. But here's the one that we want to pay uh, very, very close attention to because this is something that uh, – uh, okay, Bill saying one chip maker uh, – Okay, hold on one second. I got a couple of questions coming in here. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Z is asking, uh, do I does Mr. Uh, does uh, John Jameson thinks that the Bitcoin could get down to the twenty thousand uh, level? I, I believe he's looking at around twenty five thousand. Mr. Z is what I'm looking at, so I don't know. Uh, but Bill, Mr. Bill, saying on a chip maker is upgraded is that it's up a hundred percent. So I, I don't follow the chip makers. All I followed was. Uh, uh, Intel and AMD, and as I remember, they didn't look that bullish, but I haven't looked at them in months, so I should shut up and not not say something like, you know, hey, you know what I could do is I could actually look at the chart. How about that? Let's see how this is doing. Let's take the number one chip maker, I guess, would be uh, be Intel. So let's just see how the old Intel is looking to see if it's a uh, it's a bullish chart or whatever. Let's get this up here. Oh, wow. Boy, this is a real bullish chart on Intel. Shut the front door and raise a rent on this one. Holy moly, this is a bullish one. Wow. Man, get me some intel. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Are you kidding me? 
and they say there's a shortage of this stuff, get out of here. Who are they trying to kid? God, a third grader can realize there's no shortage of chips. Maybe buffalo chips, but look at that. This is the number one chip maker. Let's look at AM. Well, I don't want to waste any time with the stocks. That's not uh, that's not what I'm here for. We're going to take a break here, boys and girls. Please stop calling in. Al said the lines are just lit up so much that it's almost like a heat lamp in there, and he's, he's having a little trouble. So stop calling in for a while, folks. Wait a few minutes. Wait about 10 minutes, and then maybe, maybe try again when the lines lighten up a bit. 877-927-927. 6648 and we'll be back with you after we pay a few bills here for the O'Brien folks and uh, we'll be right back uh, did I over uh, I, mean, I guess I messed that up <laughs> uh, nothing like dead sound huh boys Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, as usual, the Den folks are a whole lot smarter than me. The price of NVIDIA has gone off the roof. I guess the SOX index also has done that. Uh, AMD is a lot stronger than Intel, of course. 
uh, still doesn't look – well, it's still bullish, but not like Intel anyway. Anyway, it looks like Intel is history. But uh, the NVIDIA must be the higher end chips or whatever they want to do. it. I don't know, but uh, I shouldn't get involved with these stocks, boys and girls. I know futures and Forex, and other than that, I get started out of my bailiwick. Uh, that's when it really gets tough here. So let's take a look here at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, what's happened here over the past couple of months. This is going back a long way. Now, this is only, of course, the Dow Jones. You know, the NASDAQ looks a lot different. The S&P looks different. But this is the one that's in the news all the time. You can see we made a top way back here in uh, August, uh, around the 16th of August. Oh, it happened to be right at a new moon. Uh, now we've come down uh, this week. We've hit a 61% retracement. Uh, we came down today and uh, just tested that again, uh, I believe, uh, one more time. I guess the third time we've been there. The low's been right on that number, as I recall. So we've been there uh, quite a bit. Now, I'm saying here, if we get below that 34,000, that suggests a major top has been made. Now, remember, I did this on the 14th, which was a Monday. A two, excuse me, Tuesday. That's when I was doing the show with the uh, people in Las Vegas, the money show, and I was looking for a little rally to come in here. Now, those of you that want to do some history, go back and look at some of these other markets that have made some major tops in here and watch the patterns and how they unfold. I'm going to be talking about that on Wednesday, and I hope we have uh, Shane Smolian will be our guest. Hey, we've got be, maybe a guest on Wednesday, and we've got none other than the David White from TFNN on the line. Sell when you have to, not when you want to. David, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I heard you comment about the chip shortage. Yes, sir. And Please tell I me thought what's I would just on. add a little color to the thing. Um, how about I brought truth? it up on my show a few times. Yeah. Go ahead. But there's a shortage. In the ability to manufacture them, there's a there's a shortage of some key components like uh, kind of foil, um, not just actual copper foil and some of the other things. Mm -hmm. And why that's a, not a big deal to big companies like uh, Nvidia or Intel or AMD, the small guys that make all these little chips for a quarter or a penny or a dime. It's a big mm -hmm. problem because all the big guys that have lots of money that make 100 or 200 percent on their chips per chip can spend the, the money to go to uh, Taiwan Semiconductor and say, uh, put me in front of those guys, right? So anybody yep. that's making a chip that's like 10 cents and anybody that's ever dealt with a car manufacturer or someone who makes a washing machine or anybody that uses these chips that are always looking for the absolute cheapest thing in the world. That's why. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to double the price of their product because maybe they're only making 10 or 15 percent. But uh, if you're a big mm -hmm. company, uh, it's problematic uh, it's, if you're not making high margins. If you're you know, making a hand calculator that's a dollar, how do you charge two bucks for it? You know, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the chip shortage depends on where you're at. But even mm -hmm. NVIDIA, or not NVIDIA, and even Cisco with their computer routers this week said they're having problems getting enough uh, parts. So there is kind of a chip shortage. But if you're making lots of money on it, eh, it's, mm -hmm. you might as well be printing money. You just can't wow. print all the money you want. <laughs> Okay, David, I've got a question for you now. I I, I hear about the uh, the thing in the uh, uh, about automobiles that that's really the uh, you know the, the 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 big problem is the automobiles. Is that is that true that they can't even get these cars off the boats and stuff because they they don't have computer chips? Is is that true? Yeah, the F uh, Ford one fifty has yeah. uh, ten different microprocessors in the in the dash. Uh -huh. And what they did was they had a cheap model that they had the old, uh, old. Uh, remember the the old analog steam gauges that used to be in cars. I'm just yes. kidding about that, but they're still oh. in there. <laughs> but th they were mechanical, and yeah. they just called up Mexico and said, "Hey, we need a hundred thousand of these mechanical ones because they didn't use chips." So if you walk into uh -huh. a dealership at Ford now, uh, especially the base models. You know, where they even used to have at least uh, an LED display in the dash, it's mechanical. So, uh, yeah, it is, it, is a, it is a deal. 
they can't afford to to add two or three hundred dollars to the price of a car because they're only making probably eight percent on a Ford F one fifty. Where do they so, make the money on? If that's all they, you know, they got to make it on the service end, I guess, right? Well, if you, I, I saw a note, and it's been several years ago, but if you bought a Cadillac, and then you bought all the parts for the Cadillac, mm -hmm. it was eight hundred percent more expensive to buy all the parts and put them together yourself than buying yeah, an actual Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah, I have so, a Cadillac, and I had the fuel pump replaced, and I, I understand that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, the, they do make a lot of money on service. Um, the dealers don't make much money selling new cars. They make most of their money selling used cars and service, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So on the dealer level, it's kind of one thing, but everybody makes money on parts. That's a huge part of the business. But for Ford, if they're... You know, they're going up against Chrysler or, you know, a Dodge Ram pickup or any of those things since mm -hmm. pickups are, are the hottest thing, selling thing that there is on a lot today. But, mm -hmm. you know, you got to get the car to the uh, – you got to get the car on the uh, on the lot to sell it. So Ford, Chrysler, those rest of those guys, Chevy, they're doing everything they mm -hmm. can to make sure that they don't have – or have as few uh, chips – because they can call Mexico and get anything they want stamped out, or they wow. can call China and get any kind of plastic part they need. But wow. chips, and you know, there's more than just the chips and the and the uh, copper foil. There's a, a special kind of uh, insulator that's made by the same people that make MSG that goes in your uh, uh, Asian food, your China food takeout, mm -hmm. and Without that, they didn't do it. And everybody last year during the uh, height of the, the uh, uh, pandemic back in March canceled all their orders. Well, it takes three months on some chips to get them from the uh, beginning part to where they come out the other end of the uh, fabricator. So, if you know, it's not like something you can turn on and off like a faucet. It takes a mm -hmm. long time to get those things up and running. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you have half the order for your insulator, you it may take you six months to uh, make sure that you've got the parts, uh, the chemicals coming in and the people hired and the machines running. So, uh, you know, we switched to this just in time uh, uh, kind of uh, design for, uh, for, uh, Parts. A lot of that had to do with Michael Dell, who figured out how to get every part in the world for a computer in the day before it had to ship, and he did put them <laughs> together. Wow! And that worked out fine, but uh, yeah. a lot of problems. Wow, David, thanks, thanks for Larry. joining us, my friend. So when you want to, not when you have to. You, <laughs> David White, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, uh, we're back. Uh, six, several people asked me, uh, uh, now that I'm heading for the 81st furlong poll, do I have any uh, things on my bucket list? Yeah, the only couple, the only two, the two major ones are one, I, like I mentioned before, I, I want to be able to outlive my family. And the second, ah, excuse me, I want my family to outlive me. And then the second one, of course, is I'd like to see a segment on TFNS. Well, Let's try it again, Larry, on CNBC or uh, Bloomberg or, uh, you know, financial channel somewhere where they have a whole segment talking about astro cycles and how they actually work. I have a uh, side bet for one dollar with somebody about something, and I'll share that with you right now. Not a gambling man, but to me, I don't think this is a gamble. This is what we're looking at here, folks, on the long term weekly chart of the e-mini S&P, and I made a $1 bet that it would be trading down here at 3400 sometime around November the 3rd. So let's just see if it works. Now, if you go back and look in January, we were making that 1.618 expansion there. We dropped, we dropped 1,200 handles, folks. Now, for this to get down to this level, we have to drop about uh, 2200 and 2200 into 12 is 1.618 of that so that's how i come up with that and it's also a 50 percent retracement could that possibly happen ah probably not but for a dollar i think it's worth a worth a gamble so we'll be taking a look at it. we'll be talking more about this next week of course to see uh, you know what's going on with that and uh, we'll be having have shane on as our guest also tim boss to be talking about it so that'll be that'll be a fun thing to look at too the key thing today is the fact that that Dow Jones Industrial Average held that 3,400 level just spot on. Again, we've already rallied 150 points, you know, right off the bottom, you know, just like, uh, you know, we were we were expecting that bottom to be coming in here. I posted this when the show started. We've already jumped about uh, eight, eight or nine handles here. And we've got a call from Oakland, Michigan. Uh, and there we go. Go right ahead, John. Okay. Still there. John, are, John, are you there? Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah. Go right ahead. What do you got for us today? Oh, hey, Larry. How are I couldn't, couldn't hear you there. Hey, love your show as usual. And uh, two things. I can give you a little insight as to what you and David were talking about, about the cars and the chip shortage. I live in the Detroit area. And last night I happened to be with a friend of mine that works for Ford. And I was mm -hmm. asking him about, you know, Toyota, for example, has put out a thing that said for the next two years, their production is going to drop by 40 percent. OK. And I said, well, is, is it going to happen like that with Ford? And he said, absolutely. He said, it's not only the chips that we can't get. He said, we can't even get the foam 
in, that goes inside the seats in cars and trucks. He said, everything is in a backup. And I said, what is the problem? And he said, it is COVID rules, COVID work rules. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can't move product around. You talk about the supply chain being locked up. Yesterday, there were 60 ships sitting off in Long Beach Harbor, okay, mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> to be unloaded. And there were another 8 to 20 on the way in, okay, within the next couple of days, okay? Wow. It's the work rules that COVID has got strangled everything. Mm -hmm. if somebody gets COVID in a car plant, they got to shut it down. They got to shut down a line. They got to send people home. Mm. Like the guy said, even in the phone plant, somebody gets COVID. Mm. Boom. They got to clean it up. They got to get it out. Maybe that wow. will help you with uh, you yeah, know, that, that, a little that bit of that conversation really, about yeah. why the supply chain is so tight, why yeah. cars are not being uh, yeah. manufactured. He said, mm -hmm. uh, out here in Detroit, all these car plants have got a or car companies have got a bunch of uh, plants shut down right now mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. shortages of one thing or another, not just chips. But chips wow. is the primary thing. Well, it's the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. Yeah. And now, you know, my <laughs> the, the real reason why I called, Larry, was when I was with my friend yesterday, I got a text from another friend, and he said, why did gold go down $40 okay, today? Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> I wanted to, I, you know, I know what I can look up. And, you know, of course, the Philly Fed was the reason that we were told that everything went down because they had a positive outlook on the, the uh, mm -hmm. retail sales. So that means the Fed can taper and the, the dollar gets stronger and all that. But my question is in the gold, Larry, when we have a drop like we had yesterday, can I go to the COT, the Commitment of Traders, and see, did somebody go short yesterday? Did somebody, did something happen in those numbers on a daily basis that can give me some idea that uh, that's can't, why gold went down? Because somebody, you know, they crushed the market. Some, some big group uh, came in and big-footed the market. Is that possible? I, I don't think it's possible with the commitment of traders, but if you go and look at the open interest, you can see whether there's been an increase or a decrease in open interest. And that'll tell you whether there's new players or something coming in. Like at the top of the market, you know, we had a huge increase in open interest in uh, the S&P 500 when it made new highs. And, of course, it reversed from there. That told you that uh, it was going from uh, strong hands into weak hands. But as far as the commitment of traders, uh, I don't follow it uh, uh, that closely. Uh, there's a gentleman in Scottsdale that is, he's really good at it. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Slips my mind, but he's been around forever and he's quite famous. And, uh, but I, anyway, he follows the commitment of traders. But, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pattern recognition guy, John. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I, I just look at the patterns. You're in the, you're in the coin business, aren't you? No, or no, did, I'm, no, no, oh. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, okay, I, okay. I'm just a, a fellow trader. Out okay, in the good. world, who I have another dabbles John, once in a while. Another, you know. another John in Detroit so, that mm -hmm. is also mm -hmm. in the coin business. But uh, no, I have no way of knowing that. But I'm watching it right now because we've got a lot of support here at this 1700. Now, if we take out that 1670 level, all bets are off. I mean, that's not yeah. that. That's it's going to be over for the gold market. It's going to be uh, that's going to be in a major bear market. And I'm not sure that it's we're not in a bear market because you know we've uh, we've had this big rally. We rallied what 170 dollars, and we came down 100 dollars very very quickly. And so what we're looking at now is whether we're going to hold this level here. It's very, very important, 1745. We're coming into next week, which is to be, be the key week of the year for me. So this is going to be something that will be uh, really interesting to talk about now, next why, week. Why so, is next week the key week for you? And that's, well, because that's going to be like a birthday surprise. It's not my birthday, but it's somebody's birthday, and it's not mine. But and it's, <laughs> it's not, it has nothing to do with anybody's birthday. I just don't want to share it today because I don't want people okay. throwing okay. vegetables. I don't want any more vegetables throwing. But I appreciate the vegetables because I'm Italian. I make I make a beautiful I make a beautiful Cobb salad on that stuff. Just a little oil, vinegar, oregano, crushed garlic. Are you kidding me? It's one of my favorite. <laughs> Larry, I love your sense of humor, and well, I, I just love to, listening to you. In these markets, for you're welcome. Years, my, my sense of humor is kept on so many fronts, you know. And okay. that David yeah. White is a great guy too, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's really something else. 
Mr. Google. Yeah, that guy's no. one. Anyway, hey, thanks, Larry. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, you bet. And, live, uh, live I'll talk to you again. Stay Lord safe, Lord. John. Yeah, thank you for calling in. And your $20 will be in the mail, my friend. Okay, folks, we're going to be talking here. Uh, hold on one second here. Uh, just one second here. We got moving on here. Oh, we got a break from the bait 779 Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Okay, folks. Uh, we just hit a 382 retracement in the old stop and pee up there at 4438.75. Anything above that would tell us we're going to go a little bit higher, but uh, I firmly believe we're going to be going into the history books next week. And we'll discuss that uh, later on uh, next week. But we do have a handful of guests tomorrow. Paula Webb, will be, Paula Webb Douglas will be our guest on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we're either going to have Jeff Cooper or Stan Harley. Then we'll have Tim Bost and Jeff Huge from Alpha Insights also uh, later in the week. So hopefully we're going to have a full week next week of uh, great things to look at. Very, very active markets. 
uh, like David White says, sell when you want to, not when you have to. So, And always protect yourself, folks, because these markets have been going in the stock market. I posted that S&P Weekly. They've been going straight up for a long time, and that's very unusual itself. That doesn't mean it can't go a lot higher, but we're starting to see signs that the old closed line has got too much laundry on it, as old grandma used to say. So we got to tighten up the cords a bit. That means you know use a little bit tighter stop to protect yourself. Remember, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. That's the whole key of doing this. My license plates on all my cars that I've had for the last 30 years say no risk. And that's what I try to focus on. Don't always do it, but I sure try to do it. And that's a whole thing of uh, what we're watching here to look at it. Uh, I'm going to leave you with one little chart to remind us what happened way back in the year of 1987. I'll bring this up here to let you take a look at it because that was a, a life-changing moment for me. Uh, if you'll notice there, that third arrow on the right, uh, that was October the 2nd of 1987. And that was the day that I had put on a whole bunch of uh, October calls, puts, 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 puts. They expired on October the 16th, that Friday before. And I was happier than a pig in poop because that paid for my daughter's uh, medical education at a big East, Eastern University. And it, uh, I would have been able to buy the university if I'd have had the November puts. But that's neither here nor there. Trading.